There, nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapski, and we are back with another episode of Cheap Shots, our series that is dedicated to showing you how to save money on the miniatures wargaming hobby. And on today's episode, episode number 51, we're going to show you guys how to quickly and cheaply paint up Necromunda Orlock Arm Masters, Wreckers, and Cyber Mastiffs both quickly as well as cheaply. So, as you can see here, here's an overhead shot of the uh, miniatures from this. We got two arms masters in the center, four wreckers, as well as two sour mastiffs. As you can see here, this is exactly what they're going to look like using this cheapskate quick paint method. And we're also talking about a grand total investment of $34.07, and that's assuming that you buy everything for the very first time in order to paint these miniatures. And when you compare this with the cost it would take for you to paint this way using similar products by Games Workshop and Arming Painter, we're talking about a grand total savings of $161.18. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and show you guys how to quickly and cheaply paint up our masters wreckers as well as cyber mastiffs and at the same time saving yourself a ton of money at the same time all right so once you have your miniatures fully assembled the next thing you do of course is to prime them in this case i use rustoleum's flat right primer it is the cheapest flight primer i could find it cost me three dollars and 99 cents at my local walmart and all you gotta do is a quick once over priming is very very important for your miniatures it does two things one it adds a base coat to your miniature for the paint to adhere to uh, acrylic paint can otherwise if you just put acrylic paint on plain plastic it's going to slide right off and it's going to ruin your prime uh, your finish primer's got a nice good texturing for the acrylic paint to st uh, stick to and secondly I like using flat white primer and the reason why is because it gives a bright undertone to all the colors that I apply to the miniature. I am doing a quick paint method with this with these miniatures which means I'm going to do a quick oil wash using a, a polyacrylic uh, Mission Oak color by um, by Midwax and it's going to darken down and mute a lot of the colors that I put on these things. So having a really bright base coat will help make the colors more vibrant so that way when I go with the oil wash it'll mute it down a little bit at the same time it won't dull out the colors too badly. So you can see in this photo here I just did a quick once over with my white restore Petroleum uh, flat white primer and you're ready to move on for your base coats. All right, so the very first thing you do, of course, is to work on all the flesh on this part. So as you can see here, um, I basically use two different colors on this one for all my fighters, for my humans. I use flesh by Apple Barrel Paint. It runs you about 50 cents at your local Walmart. Just did two thin coats of that all over all the flesh parts of the body, so the chest, the arms, the faces, that sort of thing. And for the Cyber Mastiffs, I basically used um, Anita's acrylic taupe gray. It's kind of like a nice kind of off white kind of color at the same what i want to do is make my styber mistis look like they were kind of like these naked mole rat kind of you know deprived of the light type of looking type creatures um i was kind of inspired by the movie i am legend they have these vampiric dogs that the vampires use in i am legend and i thought that color was really really cool on these kind of creatures so i want to create the same kind of you know same kind of look for my cyber mastiffs as well so whatever color you decide to use for your guys uh, flesh colors put two thin coats on that and then let it dry and then from there you're ready to move on to a dry brush all right, the next step is going to be a dry brush. For your fighters that you painted up in flesh color, my suggestion to you is to use Peaches and Cream by Delta Serum Coat. Runs at 65 cents to local Hobby Lobby. It's a nice pale flesh color. Just did a quick once over with the dry brushing and on the flesh. What that does is that it basically catches the highlights in the raised surfaces of your miniatures and basically adds highlights to it at the same time leaving that darker flesh color in the recess of your miniature. It creates some three-dimensionality for your miniature. It looks really, really good. Now, there is going to be a kind of like a chalky finish when you get done dry brushing. Don't stress about it. And the reason why is because that chalkiness will go away once you do our oil wash. So don't worry about that. Trust the process. I also do exactly the same thing with dry brushing on my Cyber Mastiffs. I use Antique White by Apple Barrel Paint. It runs at 50 cents at your local Walmart. I do exactly the same thing as well. And uh, just do your quick dry brushing for those and you're ready to move on to your next base coat. Now for the next few slides, we're going to be concentrating solely on the human fighters in the uh, miniatures range. So the first thing we do, of course, is work on the shirts as well as the uh, tabards that these characters are wearing as well. In my case, I went for kind of like this blue grayish kind of color scheme for my gang for the jury. So the color I use is Skyline by Folk Art. It runs a 75 cent at your local Walmart. It's a nice stormy gray blue color. I put this for all the tabards on the arms masters as well as the shirts for the wreckers uh, just because I want to create this kind of like this ashy kind of gray worn out look for for my fighters and that's exactly what i did do two thin coats of skyline and you're ready to move on for your next base coat 
So now that the shirts and the towers are done, the next thing you work on are the trousers. In this case, I use gray by a Granitas Grillic. Uh, it's run to 75 cents at your local Walmart. Just put two thin coats of this stuff in all the pants. So for the Arms Masters, as for the Wreckers, I kind of put that on there as well. For the Arms Masters, um, there's not much trousers that actually shown on those miniatures because they have like this extensive armor that's put on their pants that they have and same thing with the guy with the, the huge hammer he's got an actual exoskeleton on him so you don't really worry too much about that gray color showing up all that much but for the wreckers though it is a prominent color for them just put two thin coats on them and you're ready to move on to your next base coat all right, so the next color we're going to focus on next is on the jackets. So each of these guys have basically these cut-off leather vests, these sleeveless dusters that they wear, which is one of the cool aspects of these Orlok sculpts. It's one of the things I really like about them. So what I decided to do is to match that with a bright blue color uh, made by Apple Barrel Paint. Runs 50 cents at your local Walmart. I'm going with this kind of blue paint job for all my Orlok gangs for my jury. Um, it's a nice, bright, vibrant blue color. I used it in my Caldor gangers when I was originally playing Caldor for Necromunda. Uh, and now that I'm playing playing uh, Orlocks, I wanted to carry on that blue motif. So all you need to do, of course, is put two thin layers of bright blue on your miniatures and you're ready to move on. I will tell you guys this now, the jackets are only on the Arms Masters and on two of the Wreckers. The other two Wreckers don't have any jackets, they just have normal t-shirts underneath, uh, normal, a normal sleeveless shirt underneath their harnesses. So you don't have to worry about those guys. But for the ones with the jackets though, two thin coats of bright blue and you're ready to move on for your guys' dry brush. So now that we're done with the blues and the grays for the miniatures, the next thing you need to work now is on the boots. In this case, uh, boots and gloves, I decided to use pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. It runs at 50 cents at your local Walmart. Um, pavement is actually not a black color. It's actually a very, very, very dark gray. But the nice thing about pavement paint though, it's got kind of like this little bit of a texturing to it. So it does a really nice job when you actually dry brush this with a lighter gray. So because of that, I decided to use this on the gloves as well as the boots from my Arms Masters as well as for my Wreckers as well. As you can see there, I put two things coats on that as well and if you're wondering what that's in the background there the background that's my ipad i was watching episodes of supernatural as i was painting up my miniatures so if you're wondering what's going on over there uh that's what the situation is there as well so as you can see there i just put two thin layers in the boots and on the uh, on the gloves and now i'm ready to move on to our dry brush so the nice thing about the color scheme that we use for these guys so far, we use pavement for the boots and gloves, gray for the pants, uh, skyline for the tabards, as well as for the t-shirts, and well as the bright blue for all the jackets. The nice thing about that is that all those colors can be dry brushed with exactly the same color, which is Anita Acrylic's uh, Slate Blue. It runs you 75 cents at your local Walmart. This stuff is absolutely fantastic because it is an all over dry brush over the pavement, the blue of the jackets, the storm gray of the, the uh, sorry, the storm gray, the skyline of the tabards and shirts and the gray of the trousers. I just did it once all over dry brushing with this stuff. Now, when it comes to dry brushing, it's always a good idea to dry brush lightly onto your miniatures because you could always add more dry brushing to your miniature, but it's very, very difficult to go back to darker. The nice thing about that is that the darker colors stay within the recesses of the miniature while this slate blue catches the raised surfaces in the miniature, so things like the knuckles, the folds, the fabric, that sort of thing. It adds a nice three-dimensionality to your miniature, also adds some highlighting as well. And like I said before, you will have a chalky finish when you get done with the dry brushing, but don't worry. Once we do the oil wash, that chalkiness will go away and smooth over your textures. So now we're pretty much done with the larger amount of the miniatures. The next thing you need to work on now are the finer details. So for this next step, the next thing you do, of course, is do two base coats with Ripe Tomato. It's made by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice, vibrant orange color. And I use this color for my Wreckers who are carrying uh, demo charges. As you can see on the one on the ground, on the left-hand side, he's got a demo charge hatched, hooked up to his hip, while the one rocking up in the air is actually carrying one in his hand. It's a nice, bright orange color. Seemed like a good color to use for demolitions. So I just put two thin layers of Ripe Tomato, and I got that detail taken care of. The next big... Uh, uh, detail that we gotta work on are our base coating on all the leather goods. In this case, I use Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel Paint and runs a 50 cents to a local Walmart. And I use this for all the belts as well as for the leather goods on these miniatures. So these uh, Orlock miniatures, a lot of them have satchels. Uh, they also have belts going across their chests, across their hips. They also got uh, these leather pads on the back of their armor panels. They also have these straps that go across their chest from their harnesses, from their jetpacks. So because of that, anything that has to do with leather straps, I put two thin layers of Territorial Beige on it. It's a nice, pale kind of uh, uh, khaki color that does very really nicely against this gray color as well so as you can see there, I picked out all those details in two thin layers of territorial beige 
So now that we got that detail over with, the next thing you do now is work on the weaponry. So in this case, I decided to go with this green color for the weaponry that my Orlocks are carrying. Um, but I decided to put that for all the weapon casings. So as you see there, the uh, combat shotgun on the arms mass on the left, the flamers on the wreckers on the ground as well. And the same thing with the grip of the power hammer being wielded by the guy in the exoskeleton. I just put two thin layers of holly branch. It's a nice vibrant green color. It looks really, really cool, especially when you compare it with the blue and the gray. So it's kind of like a nice little accent color on that as well. And once you guys are done painting up the weapon cases, the next thing you need to do, of course, is a dry brush. In this case, I use Lime Sherbert by Apple Barrel Paint, and I just did a quick once over with the dry brushing real quick on all the weapon panels that I painted up green color. It adds some nice three-dimensionality. Like I said, it catches those raised details on the miniature and leaves that darker green color and then reassesses as well. So it looks really, really nice as well. Now from there, we move on to the hair. So like I said before, my Orlocks, I like bright bright vibrant colors when it comes to my miniatures and so because of that for my orlocks i want them to have like these kind of like punk rocker hairstyles so i went with some pretty extreme colors for the hairdo as you can see there i got one done in dark magenta i used um Magenta by Deco Americana's Deco Art. I also use Bright Magenta for one of my records as well to give her pink hair. I use Kiwi by Apple Barrel Paint to give one of my characters a day, low, day glow uh, yellow hairdo. At the same time, I use Ripe Tomato for my other arms mask to make him look like he's got like a reddish or orangish colored hair. For one of my records, I use Chris Apple to give him a green hairstyle. And finally, for my very last one, I use Anilla Acrylics Crocus color, which is a nice purple color to give him kind of like a purple hairdo as well. Like I said, for my Orlocks, I like this kind of punk rocker look for them so I went with some really bright vibrant colors for all their hairstyles. So from there, once we get that paint up, the next thing we need to do now is do a dry brush. And so you only need to use a dry brush only for a couple of the characters. For example, the guy with the purple hairdo, I used to use Lilac Mist by Apple Barrel Paint. Runs a 50 cents at your local Walmart. For the guy with the orange hair, I gave him a dry brush of Coral Shell by Americana. Runs a 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. And same thing with the lady with the magenta hair. I did a quick dry brushing with Cameo Pink by Apple Barrel. Runs a 50 cents. Now, I did make a mistake when I was painting up earlier. When I originally showed you the last slide, I actually painted one of my records with uh, bright magenta hair another one with dark magenta but the problem is they look too similar in my opinion so i decided to change up her hair color real quick so as you can see there on the right hand side i decided to change up her hair i gave her tahitian blue hair to give her kind of like this orange uh, bluish green kind of hairstyle so i just put two thin layers of that in order to cover up the magenta that i used earlier so of course i added that in there as well so once you're done with that you're ready to move on to uh more of the finer details on these miniatures all right, so next up, we're moving on to the jump packs. So once again, we're going back to Holly Branch. Originally, I was going to paint the jump backs of the records in like a metallic color, but then I realized it was too much metallic. It wasn't enough color, in my opinion, so I decided to decide to go with Holly Branch. It's the same exact color I use for their weapons, so I figured I might as well use exactly the same thing for the jump packs. So for the jump packs, I just covered all the entire thing in two thin coats of Holly Branch. At the same time, the Arms Master, who's got the uh, exoskeleton, the servo, uh, the servo uh, frame that's on him, uh, he's got these huge short shoulder pads on his armor and so I decided to paint those in green as well to kind of give this idea that it's part of a harness system is what I decided to do so two thin coats of holly branch and then you're ready to move on for a dry brush and just like the weapon casings we're going to dry brush the uh, parts that we painted for the harnesses real quick we just do a quick dry brushing of some lime sherbet as you can see in this photo, it leaves the uh, brightest surfaces and the details with that lime sherbet color while leaving that holly branch and the darker recesses so it makes it kind of like a nice three-dimensionality to the miniature as well so once you're done dry brushing it, the next thing you do now is work on the finer details on the jump packs. Alright, so the next thing we did, of course, is do two thin coats of yellow as well as kiwi on these jump packs. Now, if you'll notice, the jump packs, where the little vents are for the rocket thrusters are located, it looks like in the front they have like these little uh, bumps on the front. And I I kind of interpret those as being like headlights, kind of, on these jump packs. That way they see exactly where they're going at. So because I decided to paint those into kiwi by Apple Barrel Paint, it's a nice bright neon green color it also contrasts very nicely with the holly branch and at the same time gives it kind of like this eerie glowing effect on their jump pack so i picked it out two thin layers of that at the same time i also decided to pick out some yellow as well add some accent colors to it as you can see the thrusters they actually kind of interesting they're kind of asymmetrical one thruster has like this smooth finish while the other one has kind of like this rough circuitry finish on the other one so the ones that were smooth i decided to pick those out in two thin layers of yellow paint uh, i did that to make it look like it was kind of like another hazard hazard light or kind of like a little you know a little light source that way you can see them coming when they're rocking through the underhive put two thin layers of yellow as well as kiwi and you're ready to move on to your guys metallics 
Alright, so now it's time to move on to the Metallics, and this time we're going back to the Cyber Mastiffs as well. So you can see here, any part that's going to be silver on your miniature, I picked out on two thin coats of Gunmetal Grey by Folk Art. It's a nice, dark, gunmetal metallic color that's sold by Apple Barrel, um, sold by Folk Art at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. So things like the blades on the daggers, the barrels of the guns, the magazines, the armor panels, the plates of armor that's on them, as well as the jump pack frames on the jump packs, the vents, the rocket thrusters, um, the cybernetic limbs and chains and collars of the cyber mastiffs as you can see there i picked all that out in two thin layers of gunmetal gray so anything that you want to do in silver pick that out in that color real quick so not all your silver details are finished with next thing you need to do now is start working on some accent colors in this case i used copper by folk art runs you 75 cents at your local hobby lobby and i decided to use this stuff on any accent pieces on this on the silver they're carrying so for example the barrels of the flamers that my records are carrying i picked that those barrel shrouds out in copper same thing with the uh, cyber mastiffs i also looked for any finer details like things like servos and actuators i just kind of picked those out in two thin layers of copper as well same thing with the exoskeleton of the uh, guy with the exoskeleton as well things like the hydraulic systems and things i picked those out in copper as well to add some uh, interest to the miniature as well and lastly, the very last metallic color I decided to use was Pure Gold by Folk Art. It runs a 75 cents at your local Hobby Lobby, and this part was for all the little accent pieces that I wanted to paint up in gold as well. So things like belt buckles, the buckles on the harnesses of the jetpacks, I picked those out in pure gold. The hilts of the daggers, I picked those out in pure gold as well, for my wreckers anyways. For the Cybermess stiffs, things like the ball bearing and metal joints, uh, some of the circuitry that was exposed on the dogs, some of the collars, I picked those out in two thin layers of pure gold. Same thing with the goggles that the wreckers are wearing and same thing with the arms masters i picked out those visors and two thin layers of pure gold same thing with the belt buckles some of the pads on the armor the grips of the weapons as you can see there i just kind of picked out those little finer details with pure gold just to make it look not so monochromatic and add some variety to the colors that i was using so with the metallics done, now we're starting to work on the finer details in the miniature. So one of the things I did, of course, was pick out the lenses of each of the goggles. These guys are Orlock fighters, so almost all these guys are wearing goggles of some sort. So I decided to pick out those goggles with a little dot of lime sherbet. It's a nice, vibrant color that nice contrasts nicely with the gold framing of the uh, goggles. Just did a really quick little dots of lime sherbet. I did exactly the same thing with the eyes of the Cybermask stiff on the left-hand side as well, so that way you can see those eyes like look like it's kind of glowing and kind of like this mutated war dog looking thing. And at the same time, I'll start working on some of the cabling for the detonators attached to the demo chargers that my uh, records are using. I decided to pick that out in two thin layers of winter green. It's a nice pale mint green color that contrasts nicely with the ripe tomato color orange of the demo chargers. That way you can kind of stick out by the same time and it contrasts nicely with those demo charges. And for the Cyber Mastiffs, I decided to pick them out a little bit with some bright magenta. I decided to use this color along the scar tissue of where their cybernetic joints and cybernetic augments meet with the flesh. Uh, there's like this scar tissue around all the cybernetic joints that I thought looked really, really cool. So I decided to pick those out with some bright magenta colors is what I decided to do. Make it look like that scar tissue was kind of worn or, or painful looking. Like I said, I want to kind of go with this creepy look for my Cyber Mastiffs on that one. So just two thin layers of bright magenta and you're ready to move on. And the very last detail that we decided to do is pick out some of the cabling. So for example, the arms master who's wearing the servo harness, uh, he's actually got some cables running and some tubes running along the leg as well as arm joints of his armor. I decided to pick those out in two thin layers of Tahitian blue to kind of make a nice little contrast color uh, to the metallics that we use for his harness. And I forgot to take a photo of this as well, but one of the Cybermastiffs also has a cable that runs from its forehead to its temple to the back of its neck. I also picked that out in Tahitian blue as well. I forgot to take a picture of that Cybermastiff, but I also did the exact the same thing with that one. So these are what your miniatures are going to look like before you do the oil wash on them. As you can see, they're all been dry brushed, they're all base coated, and like I said before, the finish on these guys is kind of chalky and kind of rough looking, and the reason why is because we have not added any washes to these miniatures yet as well. Washing is actually very important to the miniatures. It does a couple of things. First of all, the wash actually goes into the recesses of the miniatures and pulls in the recesses, so it really catches those finer details that your base coating, your dry brushing missed. At the same time, oil washing also kind of smooths together the transitions between the different colors that you use for your dry brushing and for your base coating it smooths out that chalky pastel appearance and actually makes the colors kind of merge together which is kind of nice and at the same time it also mutes down the brightness of the colors that you used because we're using a quick paint method so we use really bright colors so that way when we add the oil wash to it the oil wash will mute those colors down and it'll look more pleasing to the eye and at the same time not make the miniatures look too dark so that being said the next step is an oil wash 
So for the oil wash, I just do an all over wash with Midwax Poly Shades Mission Oak color. It's a combination of stain as well as polyurethane. So it's absolutely a wonderful product. It's actually a very, very dark product as well. If it's too dark for you, you can cut it with some paint thinner. That's what I decided to use to make it more of kind of like a, uh, more of a liquidy kind of wash. And you just put this wash all over the entirety of the miniature. And as you can see right off, this, right off the bat, you can see what I was talking about earlier. It helps to smooth over the transitions for your dry brushing as well as for your base coating. So now that chalk finish is done it also helps blend the colors together so that way it kind of mutes down the brightness of the colors and as you can really see here it really captures the details in the recess of the miniature so like the designs on the armor plating the joints of the servos the skin and scars of the cyber mastiffs you know it just does a wonderful job of doing this now normally if you were doing a quick paint method uh others would recommend that you'd use army painter strong tone Army Painter Strong Tone is a wonderful product. The only problem is it runs $32 per can. Whereas at the same time, the same amount can be bought by Minwax Poly Shades and it costs you $7. So about a fifth of the cost. And that's the reason why we use this stuff. So put this oil wash all over your miniature and let it dry and set for 24 hours. All right. So for me, for example, I like to paint in the evenings after work. So because of that, whenever I do this oil wash uh, step, I just put the oil wash on, leave my miniatures to dry all day. The next day when I come back from work and go back to painting again, they'll be completely dry at that point. And because it also has polyurethane on it as well, it also acts as a sealant for your miniature. So that part's kind of nice. Now, when it dries, you will have this bright, shiny, uh, gloss finish on your miniatures. So if you like that candy coated look and you like that sheen on your miniatures, you can totally, you know, skip the next step. But if you don't like that, my suggestion to you is to use matte spray uh, by Krylon matte varnish. I got that for about five bucks at my local Walmart. Just do a once over with that and it helps to matte down the finish. So once you let that stuff dry and cure, now it's going to work on some of the finer details on the miniature. All right, so for this next step, of course, what you're gonna do now is base coat the plastic stems that these uh, records are attached to. So um, you have these little stems in the back of the records to make it look like they're rocketing up through the air. So because of that, I decided to paint that a different color is what I decided to do. So what I decided to do is paint that out in two thin coats of pale gray by Folk Art. Runs you about 75 cents at your local Walmart, uh, Hobby Lobby. Just do two thin coats on the entirety of the stem. And the reason why is because I'm gonna go for like this ethereal jet wash type of look with these miniatures as well. So that's all you need to do. Wait for two thin layers of pale gray and you're ready to move on. So for this next step for my wash, I decided to use Amsterdam Sky Blue Light Ink is what I decided to use. Um, the reason why is because this is the same kind of technique I would use for night haunts, uh, for my hex wraiths, for my undead army, as well as for my uh, for my direwolves, for my vampire army. It's a nice ethereal look, makes it look like, kind of like a ghostly effect on this one. Well, I wanted my jet wash from these backpack jet packs to look something like that so because that what i decided to do is just take some sky blue light ink from new amsterdam uh, paint has like this wonderful turquoise color just put a thin layer of this stuff over the gray and let it dry as you can see it has kind of like this murky kind of semi-translucent ethereal glowing look which i thought looked really really cool on that part as well you could use now like oxide by games workshop but that stuff's expensive whereas the same for a fraction of the cost you can buy a whole pot of this new amsterdam ink and it'll last you for pretty much the rest your life so there you go as you just do that just put a real thin layer of sky blue ink and you're ready to move on all right, for the next part now, what we do now, of course, like I said before, I did a spray varnish on my miniatures to give them that matte finish. But the next thing we need to work on are the bases real quick. So you got these beautifully done uh, industrial bases for the miniatures. To do this is really simple. All you have to do is just paint two thin layers of gunmetal gray over the entirety of the base to give that nice metallic look. And I decided to wash it once again in Minwax Poly Acrylic uh, Poly Shades with uh, Mission Oak color again. I decided to do an oil wash on that one. Now. Here's the reason why I decided to do that. The reason why I decided to do that is because I wanted the the, the floorboards, the, uh, the the paneling that these guys are walking on to have like this shiny oil slick industrial look, like there was chemicals spilt and oil spilt on the metallic uh, parts that they're work, working on. So my plan was to use the poly shades. It has like this nice brackish dark color wash to the minute uh, to the metallic colors you can see there. But I plan on not spraying it with the varnish. And the reason why is that that way the bases have like this shiny oil slick look to them. And so that's why I decided to do that. So I, oh, I washed the bases in the uh, poly shades, left them alone for 24 hours and let it cure. So the very last step, of course, is to rim the bases. In this case, I use Skyline by Folk Art to give it kind of like this stormy grayish blue color. Uh, to the bases just put two thin coats of this uh, skyline along the rim of the bases and you're pretty much done so you can see there you got this color on the rim of the base you got this oil slick polluted decking that these guys are walking on as well and it looks really really awesome 
And there you go, you guys. This is what the end result looks like. This is the exact same photo we showed you guys at the beginning of this video. So you got this nice kind of cool industrial base that's oil slick and polluted. At the same time, you got your guys' arms masters as well as wreckers and cyber masters painted up to a beautiful tabletop standard, ready to bring the pain and the uh, bring the pain and violence to the underhive, or in my case, on the outstretched roads of the ash waste for our anarchy road campaign. So that being said, we're gonna go through our shopping list now. We're gonna talk about exactly how much it would cost for you to paint up this method of miniatures using products by both citadel as well as army painter we're going to show you exactly how much money you would save by doing the cheapskate method all right so this is what you need to purchase from both citadel and army painter to paint your miniatures exactly the same way we did and show you exactly how much it would cost first of all you need to spray your miniatures down with corax white spray which runs to 17 dollars at your local games workshop at the same time for the flesh you'll use cadian flesh tone as well as ratkarth flesh the cadian flesh tone for your fighters ratkarth flesh for your cyber mastiffs both those run your 455. you'll then need to dry brush your canadian cadian flesh tone with flayed one flesh and your uh, ratkarth flesh with wraith bone what's those cost for $4.55 as well. For the pants, jackets, and shirts, you'll need to use Rust Gray, Slanesh Gray, te uh, Teclas Blue, as well as Eschen Gray for the boots and the gloves. All those run you $4.55 as well. You also need to use Troll Slayer Orange, Baylor Brown, Caliban Green, Cyberite Green, Mephiston Red, Pink Horror, Screamer Pink, and Zerazes Purple, and Hellion Green for all the parts that you did for their hair, as well as for the leather goods that are running across their armor. And of course, all that runs you $4.55 for those as well. You'll You'll then need to dry brush all the parts you did in green with moot green and use the color lilac for all the parts you did in purple and Luganeth orange for all the parts you did in um troll slayer orange and emperor's children and baharoth blue for all the parts you did in uh paler blue uh paler purple colors and paler blue colors and those are on your running of dollars four dollars fifty five cents as well for any of the uh, for any of the details that you did for uh, yellow you'll need to purchase a can of Aber everland sunset which runs you four dollars fifty five cents for those as well now for your metallic colors you'll need to buy a pot of lead belcher screaming bell as well as retributor armor the lead belchers for the silver the screaming bells for the copper and the retributor armors for the gold all those run you seven dollars and eighty cents for those as well you also need to buy a pot of gauss blaster green as well which costs you four dollars fifty five cents and that's for like the little bit of the detailing on the demo charges that we had earlier as well and then of course you will also need to wash your miniatures in army painter strong tone which is 32 dollars for that can as well once you let that stuff dry you need to spread of course military environments if you want to but that runs you 17 dollars as well from there what you'll need to do of course is work on your miniatures or more for the little jet streams for your wreckers you'll need to paint the little plastic stems for the rocket packs and Ultawan Gray, which runs you four dollars fifty five cents for that, and then you need to wash that with now like oxide, runs you four fifty five for that pot as well. Now, assuming you're buying everything on the Citadel method uh, for the very first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of one hundred ninety five dollars and twenty five cents. For that amount of money, you could probably purchase the upcoming Warhammer Quest City the Dead uh, board box set because apparently rumors have that thing's almost close to three hundred uh, two hundred to three hundred dollars. Uh, you could probably buy that with the amount of money you need for all the paint and stuff from Citadel as well as Games Workshop. Now, for the cheapskate method, if you were to buy everything on our list for the very first time, assuming you're buying it for the, all for the first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of $34.07 to paint the cheapskate method. So, when you take the Games Workshop and Army Painter method, which runs you $195.25, and you subtract the $34.07 the cheapskate method would have cost you, you're talking about a grand total savings of $161.18 is what you're basically looking at there. So, so, as you can see, the savings speak for themselves. You're basically uh, painting up maybe a sixth, more than a sixth, uh, less than a sixth of the cost of doing it the other way. So, savings being saved in that part. You can use that as for miniatures, keep it for yourself, or do whatever the heck you want with it. It's up to you. So, there you go, you guys. That's how you guys can quickly and cheaply paint up some Arms Masters, Wreckers, as well as Cyber Mastiffs for Necromunda Orlocks. As always, you guys, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to our channel. That's good for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.